We all want to feel peace in our lives. Peace in our choices, our beliefs, our relationships, and our environment. I've learned that this desired contentment is often found through holding on to less. When we pare down what we own, what we consume, and what we value, we're left with what's intentional, a personalized curation of what is important and true and useful to us. I'm Shannon Laco, and you're listening to Paring Down, a podcast aimed at helping you declutter not only your home, but any area of your life that's overwhelming. Here, we're having interesting and honest conversations about the physical and mental clutter that drowns out what truly matters to each of us. And together, we'll learn how to pare it all down, not for the sake of perfection or becoming rigid, rather so we can move through life with less overwhelm and more joy, wisdom, and peace. Hello, puppets. We are back and it is still the holiday season. We are still in the middle of our Paring Down the Holidays mini series. And there are so many episodes that I have wanted to record for this mini series because I feel like it can be taken in a thousand different directions. So just a reminder to head back and listen all the way, way back in, um, Episode three, I had Carla Graves, who is a small space interior designer, come on and talk about avoiding the Christmas clutter when it comes to gifts and a little bit about traditions. Um, That's not even part of the mini series. It was just one of the very first podcast episodes I ever did. And then, you know, a couple weeks ago, we talked about uh, paring down holiday decor. And then we've been diving into different things biblically, or we will continue to do that for those of us who are Christians and we're paring down the true meaning of Christmas. So this mini series is just really fun to me. And I could do like a whole year on Christmas. Maybe it's just because I love it so much. I love Christmas. I'm reading a book right now called The Little Book of Huga. It's spelled H-Y-G-G-E. It looks like Higgy, Higgy. Um, it's spelled or pronounced huga, and it's a Danish concept of like intentional coziness, which speaks to me on so many levels. Um, but anyways, part of that is associated with Christmas, like this cozy huga situation. And I'm like, yes, that's my entire personality during the month of December. And I would happily make it my entire personality throughout the year. In fact, I kind of did when we lived in Alaska because it was always a little chilly, like and rainy or snowy. There was always some form of precipitation that um, kind of encouraged us to have warm drinks and and blankets and cozy up together. And I was I thrived when we lived in Alaska. <laughs> I was like in all of my cozy glory. But anyway, the point is that today we are going to continue in this mini series about paring down the holidays. And uh, today I want to talk about giving. Because as we know, it is the season of giving, but I feel like we say that more than we implement that. I feel like it's more so in behaviors and actions, the season of doing a lot and the season of buying gifts and the season of making plans. And we say it's the season of giving, um, but maybe that looks like maybe we volunteer or like maybe we like in uh, take part in a toy drive, right? <laughs> but I, I wanted to take this concept of giving and the spirit of giving during the holiday season and apply it to decluttering because that's what this podcast is all about, is decluttering our homes and our lives. And It is so perfectly aligned with giving uh, because when we are getting rid of our stuff, it has to go somewhere, right? And this isn't just going to be a uh, a podcast episode about how to give secondhand, but I am going to give you all a lot of really practical ways to offer your belongings to other people who need them. So I think a lot of times for me, I get paralyzed because I'm like, I don't know where to give my stuff. Like, how do I do this the best? And so I just drop it at Goodwill. And I'm going to talk about that. There's nothing wrong with just dropping it off at Goodwill. But hopefully this can help you get some ideas and streamline the process of figuring out where your stuff goes. Because, you know, I I think for a lot of us, (laughs) one of the things that stalls us in decluttering is we're like, what do I do with all this stuff that I want to declutter? It's like one more step. 
So hopefully today's episode is really helpful in taking some of the mental gymnastics out of figuring out that next step for your belongings. Uh, But there are other reasons to give back other than just because you want to get stuff out of your house. So uh, I'm going to share some of those reasons with you that I think are really motivating. And the first four are actually reasons that were given by Nova Medical Center in an article that they wrote online about four reasons to give back to your community. So one of those first reasons is is the obvious one, is that it helps somebody else. Okay, that one feels really obvious, but let, let's think about that. I think a lot of times I wonder, does anyone else really want this? Like, yes, I'm going to bring it to a thrift store. Yes, I'm going to offer it secondhand, but they're probably not going to appreciate it either. And that's just not true. We all live different lives. We all have different needs at different seasons in our lives. And whether you're donating your time or you're donating your belongings, the people who receive them genuinely need them, right? Like even if someone's given me their things, their hand-me-downs, the ones that I keep, I genuinely need or love. Like it didn't serve them anymore, but it really brought a lot of joy to my life. Uh, And that can look like, you know, sleep uh, the slumber pods where you black out your your kids, um, whatever it's called, pack and play, right? Like it can be as, as practical as that or it can be a Christmas dress. And so I didn't have to go buy a Christmas dress for my daughter because our neighbors gave us one, right? Like these things will matter in other people's lives. So that's exciting to think about. This second one here is a big one. Giving back makes you happier. This is a great reason to give back. When we give of our time and our possessions, we feel good, according to scientists. Hashtag science. Because we are hardwired as human beings to help other people. So there is a study that was published by the American Psychological Association, which discovered that people who gave to others were significantly happier giving than when they received gifts. Other studies have confirmed this, stating that giving promotes social connection and trust and that it releases endorphins, activating the pleasure center of the brain. I think we've all experienced this before and we maybe forget about it too easily or we use it as maybe as an excuse to like buy too much for other people. I think that's that can be a little bit of a pitfall. It makes you so happy to give to others that like you just buy clutter for people. So we do need to reel that in. But just remember when it comes to donating the stuff that you have and you're giving it secondhand to somebody and you're donating it, getting it out of the house, it will feel so good, especially if you know exactly where it's going and who you're helping. Um, Number three, it actually makes you healthier physically. Donating our resources to to others is a way to live longer and healthier lives. This is wild. Research has shown that giving to charity promotes both, both physical and mental health, specifically blood pressure, body mass index, and cholesterol levels were cholesterol levels were lower in volunteers than in non-volunteers these benefits relate to a lower risk of heart disease and strokes so i mean let's just give 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 people and then we're going to live for five thousand years isn't that how it works again hashtag science okay and then The fourth reason that Nova Medical Center said it's really important to give is that helping others is contagious. So seeing other people do good things inspires others to do the same. Uh, So as a whole, you know, we modify our behaviors and make decisions based on what we see going on around us. I mean, I think as parents, it's like very, that's a very clear example. So whatever we do, our children do. So my daughter yesterday was so cute (laughs) when I came in to get her from her 90 minute uh, quiet time. So my kids ages two, three, and five all either have to do a nap or quiet time. My three and five year olds get to choose if they want to take a nap or a quiet time during that period of time every day, 90 minutes from 2.30 to 4. And they have to wait for the light to, to turn green before they're allowed to come out of their rooms. And so yesterday my daughter did quiet time instead of taking a nap. And when I came in, she had all of her little dress up things like organized perfectly in a line. It was so funny. And I was like, well, I wonder where she gets that from because I'm always organizing and like trying to set things up nicely, you know? And so people, children and adults, we do what we see being done around us. So if we see see someone else using their time or resources to help others, we are instilled with this notion that we should do the same. 
So biologically, we know that it makes us happier. And socially, we know that it will help others and bring us all closer together. So, you know, giving has all of these different benefits. And those first four, uh, you know, like practically helping someone, number one, number two, making you happier. Number three, making you healthier. Number four, uh, spreading this contagious desire to give. Those are the four that were listed by Nova Medical Center. And then I had some too that I thought of like giving back is environmentally beneficial, right? I mean, I, I'm no environmentalist and I don't have all of the answers when it comes to sustainability, but like I'm smart enough as we all are to know that like our clothes going to stay in a landfill forever and ever, amen, is not great for our environment. And I, we have to think about that for future generations. Like we probably will be okay, but what about our kids and then their kids? And like our children are going to love their children just as much as we love them. And then their children are going to love their children. And it's like, it'll be so sad if they live in a world that um, can't support them because we just consumed so much um, coming ahead of them, generations ahead of them. So secondhand and, um, and sharing with one another, giving to one another is so environmentally beneficial. And to me, that's a relationship piece because we're really thinking about the people that are, com are coming after us. Obviously, there's the personal benefits of a calmer home. We talked about that at the beginning when I first started talking in this episode about giving back. But that is a huge benefit is your home will be calmer when you donate to other people. And the next one it, that I thought of is generational values. And this kind of speaks to what we were talking about, how it influences uh, other people and that helping is contagious. But I want my children to truly not just say that giving is better than receiving, but to experience that. And so that looks like, yes, a lot of times I do have to declutter maybe without their help, especially at their ages. I mean, I, I include them. I've talked about this in other episodes, but there are times, right, that I go through their boxes and I'm like, okay, you will not forget this teeny, you're not going to miss this teeny tiny action figure or like dumb little ball that came in a like goodie bag from a birthday party, right? So there's times that I'm decluttering without their input. And there are plenty of times that I take things to the donation center that they've decided to get rid of and I don't bring them with me. But the times that I do bring them with me and I actually let my older kids get out of the car, take the boxes from the back of the trunk and put them in the donation bin um, if I'm doing a Goodwill run. Like those are the moments they remember. And we as we're doing it, we say, oh, I'm so excited. It's going to go into that store through those doors right there. And someone's going to come in and be able to buy it at a cheaper price and enjoy it that maybe they couldn't have afforded it when we bought it at Target, right? And like getting specific with them, um, I, I really feel like it's helping them use that lens more uh, easily in their own lives. It's like strengthening that muscle that they can then start thinking that way as they move through life and thinking about other people and how what we can do for others um, is impactful and it feels really good ourselves. And those are generational values that I want to pass down to my kids. So donating is something um, that can affect them and we love them. So uh, those are just a rundown, right, of why giving back is, is so important. And I also want to be able to share with you uh, some uh, like very practical ways or places you can bring your things. So I'm a goodwill girl and uh, people have mixed feelings about that because of, I guess there's some controversy controversy over <laughs> where the money at the top of the goodwill chain is going and and all of that. I personally believe in kind of like simplifying my own journey if that's what I need to do right now. It doesn't mean that I am like putting blinders on and not caring about the big picture. Of course, I care about the big picture, um, but especially when it's a busy season or we are maybe at the beginning of our decluttering journey, the most important thing for your sanity is to just get the stuff out of the house. And Goodwill is a great option because it's really easy. You just like swing by and drop it on the bin and move on your merry way. And your stuff has a better chance of helping somebody else 
through Goodwill, then it is sitting in your closet. If it is sitting in your closet, there is a 0% chance that it will be helping somebody else. If it is sitting in a bin at Goodwill, there's like at least a 50% chance, you know, (laughs) that it's actually going to be a positive thing for somebody else. So it's better than nothing. And it's much, it's a simple process. Uh, But I wanted to offer you options other than Goodwill. Uh, and and one of the reasons this came to mind is because in my Instagram stories, when I've talked about dropping off donation boxes before, I have had multiple people be like, why don't you do donation pickups? And I'm like, because I am a human of habit and I found the one thing that works for me and I just stick with it. But I'm sure if I took two seconds to schedule a pickup, I would become addicted to that. I actually loved one of uh, the people who DM'd me was like, I schedule a pickup every other month. Maybe she said once a month even, or maybe, I don't remember, but it was a consistent pickup where they come to her house every month on the same day to pick up donated items. And she's like, it keeps me very accountable for consistently moving things out of my house because I know these people are coming to pick it up and I don't want them to show up and have nothing to get. And I've now wasted their time and their service. And I think that is like a pretty, um, hardcore, but pretty awesome to have that consistency. I should probably do that because I'm always filling our donation box. It's a diaper box or an Amazon box, whatever I have at the time, usually diapers because I still have two um, in diapers, kind of, sort of, at least overnight. That's not the point. The point <laughs> The point is, is that there's a consistency here. I'm consistently going to Goodwill. My kids know where it is. They, when I actually sometimes like describe where things are, I'm like, oh yeah, their house, it's over by Goodwill because my children know where that is. It's that consistent in our lives. Or you can schedule a pickup to add to consistency. So uh, a great way to schedule a pickup is pickupplease.org backslash donation program. But I will have that exact, um, link in the show notes. Actually, all of these links, everything I'm going to offer you right now will be in the show notes. So that'll be really easy, but pickupplease.org. All you do is you enter your zip code and then you schedule a pickup. I mean, talk about a great service. Another way that we can give our stuff back is to shelters for uh, battered women and, uh, and children who are in need. And we know it then goes directly to these people. Again, domesticshelters.org. You just go there and you put in your zip code. It finds a shelter near you and you schedule a drop off. Like it's that simple. Those two are my favorite websites that I found because all you have to do is put in a zip code. Uh, Because a lot of these other ones, they don't have like a national program. And so you kind of have to like look up, donate to so-and-so near me. And that's one extra step, which I believe in you. I know you could do this, but I wanted to streamline and make things as simple as possible for you on this podcast episode today. And so those two are my favorite, pickupplease.org. And they bring it to directly to charities that need it, right? Like they've done the research, whether it's like a veterans charity or a shelter or homeless or anything like that. Uh, Pickupplease.org they care and therefore have put in the research. So you know it's going to somewhere good. And then domesticshelters.org, zip code. But these are other ideas that you can do because I believe in you and you can take one extra step to find something near you. Other places we can donate, places of worship. If you go to church or even if you don't and you just like drive by a big church building every day on your way to work, you can just call that church, just Google their name and call them and say, hey, do you guys take donations or need donations for any of your community involvement programs? I know for my church currently, they um, have a program where they collect shoes and then they are able through a nonprofit to distribute those into schools for children who need shoes because as we know, kids' feet grow so fast. And so for me, like a lot of times our kids grow out of their shoes before they really get ruined, you know, and so those shoes that are still in good condition, I can then donate through church. So call any church and say, hey, what do you need? What programs do you do? Is there anything I can offer you? I'm trying to get some stuff out of my house and I would love to help. And they will be happy to tell you. And a lot of times, even if they don't have a program or they don't have a specific need right then, they can point you to somewhere who does. So um, places of worship are a really great place to call. Call schools. 
call the front desk, cold call, and just be like, hi, do you have a donation program? Do you do a collection for kids who might need coats or shoes or um, anything like that, really? Like, do, you, do any of your teachers need, like your kindergarten teachers, do they need extra clothes for children who have an accident at school? The schools more likely than not do have a donation program and they can tell you about it. And there you go. Va va voom. That's the incorrect like use of va va voom. I'm pretty sure that's like a, usually like a like a, a sexy woman is when you say va va voom. So <laughs> uh bada bing bada bing bada bing bada boom. I don't you know what I was trying to say is voila. You now have a place to bring your your stuff. You guys, I'm so weird and so embarrassing. Okay, places of worship, schools. Um, people, specific people you can give to are children in foster care. Go online, Google how to donate my belongings or items. I would definitely specify, specify that because otherwise they're just going to, um, it's going to populate with different ways to donate monetarily. So ways to donate items, clothing to foster children near me. I found a whole bunch near me in Florida, or you can just find the, like the foster care office phone number near you and you, and you call them. Um, it's like a usually a government number, uh, refugees, these people, gosh, can you imagine being a refugee? You show up in another country because you, for your safety with your children and you, I mean, these people might be like, just like so smart and successful in their own countries. And then they come here and just because they don't speak the language or they look different, everybody just thinks that they're kind of, um, I don't know, like lower than, and they, they pity these people when in reality, they're just people who love their children and they just want to keep their families safe. I mean, whether they have children or not, they want to stay safe, you know, because I don't know, that's like a human right. Um, anyways, I just think about refugees, refugees a lot and what they go through. My brother, actually, he's out in Virginia. He once a week, and this, this is um, a program or like his church, I guess, like is the one that kind of hooked him up with this uh, opportunity. But once a week, he drives refugees because they don't have cars to their English speaking classes. Isn't that so cool? So he picks them up Monday night, drives them there. They're there for two hours or whatever. And he goes back home and then he comes back at nine o'clock PM, pick them up and takes them back to their home so that they have this opportunity to become more integrated in society by learning our language. And so refugees are really important people to think about. So Google, <laughs> you know, how can I donate my belongings to refugees near me? They're oftentimes, they're just like in these apartments and they don't have anything in them. They need the basics. They need your old furniture that you don't like. You know, these, these can be put to good use for people who are here and don't have anything with them except of their loved ones. So there are other options in, in terms of giving back that aren't just like donation, but you can do buy nothing groups. I mean, I guess that's still technically donating. Buy nothing groups on Facebook are awesome. I have to tell you how my girlfriend does it because to me, I'm like, uh, because it, it's like so much extra work. I have to take a picture of the thing and then I have to put it out there and then I have to choose somebody and then I have to coordinate with that person. Then they have to show up and take it. I'm like, this is so much work. I don't want to. So this is what my girlfriend does. She says that she just snaps a picture, puts it up on the group and says, who wants it? And uh, the first person to comment, she just goes, great, I'm putting it on my porch. It will be there until 3 p.m. tomorrow. Come grab it. And if it is still there at 3 p.m. tomorrow, I'm going to move to the next person on my list. So she doesn't have to coordinate with them. She just says, great, come and get it. It is outside. To me, that is so much better than being like, can, does three o'clock work for you for pickup? Like, I don't need to be there. And like, what am I worried? This is going to be stolen off of my porch. Good. I'm trying to get rid of it anyway. <laughs> like, anyways, I thought that was really smart. So she just does that. Um, uh, you can also uh, do freecycle.org. It's similar to buy nothing, but you don't need, um, you don't need like to use social media. It's just through the app or the, the, uh, website. So freecycle.org. Again, all of these are going to be in the show notes. Uh, oh, another great one. I, I don't, this doesn't fall as much into the buy nothing free cycle type thing, but um, findhelp.org. This would fall under maybe the children and foster care and refugee thing when you're trying to find somebody who needs your help and needs your things. 
if you go to findhelp.org, it's really designed for people who need help, but it's a great place to go if you want to offer help because you can see what the needs are. And at the top of that website, there's like this, uh, you can choose like home goods or belongings or something like that. And then it will show you near you where you can go to get those belongings if you're someone who needs it. And so as the person who has the belongings, you can then call that organization and say, hey, can I donate these to you? So findhelp.org is really, really great. And of course, just good old word of, word of mouth. Ask your friends. I mean, ask your neighbors. Do you need this? Um, I had a girlfriend in my small group at church that was like, hey, our custodian, she's a teacher, our custodian at school is suddenly uh, has to house her daughter and grandchildren and they don't really have anything. Do you guys have anything you can give? And I was like, oh my gosh, I've been trying to think of where, how to get rid of this pack and play. I actually have two pack and plays that we're done with now that my two-year-old has decided he will crawl out of any sleeping arrangement. So he's getting a toddler bed for Christmas. And um, I never got rid of our three-year-old's pack and play. And so we have two. And I was like, oh, this is a great opportunity because she said they have, there's a one-year-old and obviously they don't have a crib um, in grandma's house. And so I'm going to be able to bring that pack and play for them. Right. So um, I'm so glad that she just asked and we can ask people to just like text your friends or text. Do you, have you heard of anyone that needs X, Y, and Z? Because people have, they'll be like, oh, my coworker mentioned this, or like, I know so-and-so who just had a baby or whatever. So just don't be afraid to ask uh, the people in your life, your coworkers, your, your sphere of influence is what I like to call it. Um, so that's that. I hope today's episode was helpful in just reminding you that it doesn't have to be so complicated to donate our items and to get them out of our house. We just have to do it, not only for the sake of others, which is important. That is an important sake, if you will. <laughs> like, let's be kind to people in this world because that to me is like the most important thing. Uh, but also because it's good for us, you guys. It gets our house in order and cleaned and it's good for our happiness. It's good for our health and you can do it. It's not, it does not have to be as complicated. We just have to get out of our heads. We have to stop thinking like, oh, this is so hard. What do I do with all my stuff? And just be like, oh, there are a bajillion options. And if I just take literally two minutes to sit down and Google something, I can arrange a pickup or I can call somewhere and just have it done so quickly. But in our heads, we just make it so complicated. Uh, and so I encourage you to get out of your head, to go to the show notes, to pick one of these options and to donate your items because it is the season of giving. And so let's actually make it the season of giving rather than just saying that. Okay. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. You just listened to an episode of Pairing Down with me, Shannon Laco. If you enjoyed the show, it would mean the world if you can leave a review wherever you listen and share this episode with a friend. Those reviews really are what keeps a podcast on its feet for the long haul. And I will read every single one with a huge smile on my face. So thank you ahead of time. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit subscribe. Also, be sure to follow along on Instagram at Pairing Down Podcast, where I offer lots of tips and inspiration for pairing down, along with what's new here on the podcast. Till next time.